In this unit, we're going to cover Texas metal dealer license plates. We'll talk about dealer temp tags that are vehicle specific, dealer temp tags that are agent specific. We'll go over buyer temp tags and receipts, internet down temp tags and receipts, and e-tag. Here you see a metal dealer license plate. As a Texas used motor vehicle dealer, you will be issued metal dealer plates, often referred to as a dealer tag or metal plate. The Texas Department of Motor Vehicles has strict standards you must abide by in order to keep your dealer license plates, and you must ensure your dealer license plates are being used correctly at all times. Most, but not all, GDN dealers may receive up to two dealer plates when you're applying or renewing your license. Wholesale dealers may only receive one plate when applying or renewing, and only one additional plate regardless of vehicle sales. You must mount the plate on the rear license plate mount. I want to repeat that. You must mount the plate on the rear license plate mount. You may not display the plate in a window or use a license plate magnet and affix it to the trunk. It must be properly mounted like a normal license plate. The number of dealer plates you may be purchased depends on the number of sales and the license type. Motor vehicle dealers may apply for metal dealer's license plates for all vehicle types that the dealer is licensed to sell and may only use dealer plates on vehicles that are included in that license. For example, a dealer who is only licensed to sell cars and light trucks may only use a dealer plate on a car or a light truck in the dealer's inventory and never on a motorcycle or a trailer. When you're renewing your dealer license, you can cancel plates upon renewal. So let's say, for example, you have two metal dealer plates, and when you renew your license, you only want one. You may cancel current plates upon your dealer license renewal. And by the way, GDN wholesale auction dealers are not allowed to have dealer plates. I also want you to be aware that you can use the plate stickers option in e-licensing, as you see on this slide. Remember when you applied for your license, you clicked on apply for license at the top, or maybe you were renewing your license. Just go down and over to the click on the plates stickers option to order new plates, as well as reporting missing, stolen, or damaged plates or stickers. You should never ever leave a metal plate on a vehicle on your lot overnight. They are often stolen. Thieves love dealer plates, so keep a close eye on your dealer plates. If you do have a dealer plate stolen, uh, then if it's, or if it's missing or damaged, you can select the plate stickers options in e-licensing. Only one metal plate is required per vehicle and is displayed in the rear license plate holder. The plate expires when the license expires. During the license renewal process, the license holder has the option to order new plates and renew existing metal plates, and the department will issue new stickers to the renewed plates. Let's go ahead and cover the guidelines for usage of a metal dealer license plate. Texas dealers can legally display dealer license plates on the following vehicles. On any vehicle owned by the dealership titled in the dealership name. On any vehicle that is used by the dealer, the dealer's family, or employees for personal use. On any vehicle that's being demonstrated for sale. On any vehicle being operated by the dealer with permission of the dealer only on a vehicle that has a current inspection and only on a vehicle type the dealer is licensed to sell. So always be aware that you may not place a metal dealer plate on a vehicle that you are not licensed to sell. They may only be placed on vehicles that you are licensed to sell. Now let's go over what you may not do with a metal dealer license plate. Placing a Texas dealer license plate on the following vehicles is strictly prohibited. On any vehicle towing another vehicle, on any vehicle towing a load, on any vehicle that is not titled in the dealership name, on any courtesy vehicle that is loaned to a customer, on any dealer uh, loaned to a school, and on any vehicle the dealer is not licensed to sell. Remember, you can only place it on a vehicle that you are licensed to sell. On any vehicle with signage attached, such as you know large stickers that advertise the dealership name, that's not allowed. You may never place a dealer plate on a truck that's pulling other vehicles or you know, on a loaded trailer. If you use a truck to transport your vehicles, then you will probably need to tax title and register that truck in your dealership name. So do please keep that in mind. They do have limits on the number of dealer metal plates that you can possess. The following table from the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles website explains the dealer plate allowance guidelines. 
The number of dealer plates you are issued depends on your license type and the number of vehicles that you have sold. Independent used motor vehicle dealers, travel trailer dealers, utility trailer or semi-trailer dealers, used motorcycle dealers, and independent mobility dealers are limited to two for their first year in business. Wholesale dealers may only have one plate. But upon renewal of your license, so if you're renewing your license and you're already aware of this, but upon renewal of your dealer license, independent used motor vehicle dealers, travel trailer dealers, utility trailer or semi-trailer dealers, used motorcycle dealers, and independent mobility dealers are eligible for a total of three plates. Wholesale dealers are still only allowed one plate when renewing their license. Additional plates. If it's renewal time and you have already reached the maximum allowed plates, you may submit a VIT document or other proof of sales with your renewal application to receive additional dealer plates. Proof of sales for the previous 12 month period must consist of a copy of the most, vehicle, most recent vehicle inventory tax, tax declaration or monthly VIT statement fact, uh, this filed with the taxing authority in the county of the dealer's licensed location. VIT must be submitted each time with the renewal. If a dealer needs more plates than what are allowed, a dealer may request a waiver of the plate limits by submitting a statement when they are ordering additional plates if necessary. Wholesale dealers may not apply for a waiver. Here, I want to talk about your metal dealer license plate log. You are required by the state of Texas to keep an accurate record of your metal dealer plates on a metal dealer plate log. And the dealer plate log must contain the assigned plate number, the year make of the vehicle displaying the plate, the vehicle identification number, the name of the person that's in control of that vehicle as well. And here you see an example of a dealer plate log. Always be sure to enter the plate number, the vehicle model it was placed upon, the vehicle's VIN, the date it was issued to the vehicle, the date it was returned, and the name of any drivers of that vehicle. You must keep a dealer plate law in your records at all times. This is a state law. They must be produced upon request during any records inspection by a Texas Department of Motor Vehicle Personnel during normal business hours. Any dealer plates that are not accounted for may be voided by the state. And you can download this form right there at the texasdealers.com on the dealer forms page. Next, we're going to cover temporary e-tags, a very important component of your dealership. Under this internet web-based system, which we call Web Dealer eTag, it is now all part of the same system, dealers who hold a general distinguishing number dealer license may issue dealer temporary tags, initial buyers temporary tags, supplemental buyers temporary tags, internet down temporary tags, and emergency temporary tags for each type of vehicle the dealer is licensed to sell. A converter may issue converter temporary tags. Remember, dealers and converters are required by law to have internet access at their place of business to connect to the temporary tag database. Always remember, entry of false information into the internet-based system may subject the user to revocation of access, uh, DMV civil penalties or license suspension, and or criminal prosecution. No temporary tag may be placed on a vehicle without the specific number that is generated by the e-tag database. And there are four types of dealer temporary tags. Dealer temporary tag vehicle specific, dealer temporary tag agent specific, buyer temp tag and receipt, internet down tag and receipt. And here you see an example of a temporary e-tag vehicle specific. Note the temporary tag number, the model of the vehicle is placed upon, the expiration date, the VIN of the vehicle is placed upon, and the name of the dealership that issued the temporary tag and a barcode that can be scanned easily by law enforcement. Dealer temporary tag vehicle specific is assigned to a specific vehicle. That's why we call it a vehicle specific dealer temporary tag. A vehicle with a dealer temp tag is exempt from state inspection requirements. Temporary tags may only be placed on a vehicle that the dealer is licensed to sell. If a dealer is only licensed to sell used motor vehicles, you may not use them on motorcycles and vice versa. Dealers may use a vehicle from existing inventory with a vehicle specific dealer temporary tag as a loaner car when a customer's car is in the shop and then no inspection is actually required during that scenario. However, for a courtesy shuttle, 
A dealer may use a vehicle from the existing inventory and a metal dealer plate if no dealer signs or advertising are on the vehicle. However, in that scenario, a valid vehicle inspection would be required. If a dealer wants to place advertising on the vehicle, then the dealer must transfer the title to the dealership and pay applicable sales taxes, okay? For example, if you want to have several large stickers with your dealership name all over a vehicle for advertising, that is no longer a demo and you would have to pay all applicable taxes. Texas dealers can legally display vehicle-specific dealer temporary tags on the following vehicles. On any vehicle being driven as a demo, as a demo on any vehicle being driven back and forth from an auction or to maybe have the vehicle reconditioned or repaired, etc. On any vehicle being driven from one dealership to another. On any vehicle being road tested by the dealer. On any vehicle loaned to a customer while the customer's vehicle is being repaired. On any vehicle being used in a parade. On any vehicle that's used by a charitable organization. On any vehicle which the dealer is licensed to sell. The vehicle must be owned by the dealership and titled in the dealership name. Placing a Texas vehicle specific dealer temporary tag on the following vehicles is strictly prohibited. You may not put it on any vehicle that's used for personal use by the dealer or an employee. You can't put it on any vehicle that's being used as a service vehicle by the dealership or on any vehicle with a commercial load. You can't put it on any vehicle towing another vehicle or on any loaner or courtesy vehicle or on any vehicle that's loaned by the dealer to a school or on any vehicle with signage attached such as, you know, large stickers that advertise the dealership name or on any boat trailer owned by the dealer that trans transfers more than one boat. Here you see something that's a little bit different. This is what we call a dealer temporary tag that is agent specific. Note the tag number, the authorized agent text, the expiration date, your dealership name, and once again, the barcode that you see right there at the bottom right for law enforcement to read if they're ever pulled over. An agent specific temporary tag may be placed only on a dealership employee's vehicle that is owned by the dealership. The tag must include the agent specific number from the database along with the month, day, and year that the tag expires. Texas dealers can legally display agent-specific dealer temporary tags on the following vehicles. You can put them on a vehicle that's being driven as a demo, on a vehicle being driven back and forth from an auction or to have the vehicle reconditioned, repaired, etc. On any vehicle being driven from one dealership to another, on any vehicle being road tested by the dealer, on any vehicle loaned to a customer while the customer's vehicle is being repaired, on any vehicle being used in a parade, on any vehicle used by a charitable organization, and on any vehicle only in which the dealer is licensed to sell, and the vehicle must be owned by the dealership and titled in the dealership name. Placing a Texas agent-specific dealer temporary tag on the following vehicles is strictly prohibited. You may not put them on any vehicle used for personal use by the dealer or an employee, on any vehicle being used as a service vehicle by the dealership, on any vehicle with a commercial load, on any vehicle towing another vehicle, on any loaner or courtesy vehicle, on any vehicle owned by the dealer and loaned to a school, on any vehicle with signage attached, such as large stickers that advertise the dealership name, and on any, bait tra on any boat trailer that's owned by the dealer that transfers more than one boat. You do not have to print a dealer's tag every time the vehicle is demonstrated with the agent-specific e-tag, you can issue an agent's tag to a particular agent to be used by that person on whatever vehicle they drive for the dealership. The dealer is still responsible for that agent's tag and would be able to avoid it at any time. A vehicle bearing a dealer tag is not considered to be a laden commercial vehicle when it's towing another vehicle bearing the same dealer tags and both vehicles are being conveyed from a dealer's place of business to a licensed wholesale auction or from a licensed wholesale auto auction to the dealer's place of business. When an unregistered vehicle is sold to another dealer, then the selling dealer shall remove its dealer tag and the dealer may attach a buyer's temporary tag to the vehicle or purchasing dealer may display the dealer's tag or dealer's plate on the vehicle. Now, I wanna explain a very important temporary tag, which is known as the buyer's temporary tag. A dealer is required by state law to place a buyer's temporary tag on any vehicle sold by the dealer unless the vehicle was sold to another licensed dealer and the purchasing dealer places their own temporary tag 
on the vehicle. I want to repeat that very, very important state law. A dealer is required by the state to place a buyer's temporary tag on any vehicle sold by the dealer unless the vehicle was sold to another licensed dealer and the purchasing dealer places their own temporary tag on that vehicle. Only one buyer's temporary tag can be placed on a vehicle that you sell. A second temporary tag can't be issued for the vehicle. If your customer comes back to your dealership wanting a second buyer's tag, it is never allowed. And remember, all titling and paperwork must be completed within 60 days. So here you see that buyer's temporary tag. It's very similar to other tags, but it does state that it's a Texas buyer tag at the top. Texas dealers must adhere to the following guidelines when placing a buyer temporary tag on a vehicle. They may be placed on a vehicle sold by the dealer to a retail customer. That's an important one there. They may be placed on a vehicle sold by the dealer to a retail customer. The vehicle must have a current state inspection if it is sold to a Texas resident. Must be displayed properly in the rear license plate holder. Only one tag can be placed on the vehicle, and that tag's good for 60 days. A dealer can issue a replacement if the original was lost by the customer, but that would be the rare scenario and only with the original expiration date. The buyer must keep the receipt in the vehicle. You always want to make sure of that. Make sure and tell the buyer to keep the receipt in the vehicle. And remember, the dealer must apply for the title within 30 days or 45 days if financing is involved. Placing a buyer temporary tag on the following vehicles is strictly prohibited. You may not place it on any vehicle used by, for personal use by the dealer or an employee or on any vehicle being test driven uh, at all. Remember, you never put a buyer's tag on a vehicle that's being test driven. You only put it on a vehicle that you've sold to a retail customer. You'll never put it on a vehicle that's taken to another location for reconditioning and you'll never put it on a vehicle that's used as a service vehicle by the dealership or on a loaner or courtesy vehicle or on any vehicle that's loaned by the dealer to a school. If the dealer is an out-of-state dealer and does not have dealer tags, then a buyer's tag can be used. Buyer tags are valid for a period not to exceed 60 calendar days, including the date the vehicle is sold and may only be displayed on a vehicle that is actually sold by the dealer. So obviously you could never issue one of these to a person that just walked in off the street. They could only be placed on a vehicle that you sold to your customer or possibly to another dealer that did not have their own. Only one buyer's tag would be issued in that scenario. A dealer must provide a buyer's temporary tag receipt to the buyer of each vehicle to which a buyer's tag is issued, regardless of whether the tag is issued in the ordinary course of business or maybe it's an internet down or emergency tag. And by the way, uh, I always want you to be aware lien holders are required to release liens within 10 days of the payoff. And also, uh, if the dealer has paid off the lien and cannot obtain the release of the lien from the lien holder, then the dealer should definitely notify the Department of Motor Vehicles of the lien holder's tardiness. And then the dealer should obtain for the buyer a 30-day permit from VTR, which costs $25 and would require liability insurance from the customer to be shown to you. If a dealer intends to transfer plates from the buyer's old vehicle, then you would put the uh, then you may put the plates on the vehicle and then you'll put the buyer's tag over that vehicle plate. I want to repeat that important statement. If a dealer intends to transfer plates from the buyer's old vehicle to the vehicle they just purchased from you, then the dealer may put the plates on the vehicle and put the buyer's tag over the vehicle plate. So don't forget to fill out that plate transfer form as well. Always inform the buyer that until the vehicle is registered, the temporary e-tag must stay on the vehicle as the sale information will not be available in the database for 48 hours, during which time the metal plates will not be recognized by law enforcement. The same holds true for those dealers who take the title application immediately and obtain plates to put on a vehicle before the buyer picks up the vehicle. A temporary tag is a temporary registration and must be entered into the state database. And remember, a $5 fee is collected whether a temporary tag is actually placed on the vehicle or not. I want to repeat that. A $5 fee is collected whether a temporary tag is actually placed on the vehicle or not. The dealer must instruct the buyer to keep a copy of the receipt in the vehicle until the vehicle is registered in the buyer's name and metal plates are affixed to the vehicle. So remember, there is a $5 charge to the consumer for the temporary registration evidence by the e-tag system and web dealer. And this fee is paid to the tax assessor collector at the time of titling and registration. 
Since all sales must be registered in the eTag database, this fee must be collected and paid for each sale made regardless of whether that tag is put on the vehicle or not, like I just stated. The buyer's tag is the only tag that requires a fee. I want to repeat that. The buyer's tag is the only tag that requires a fee. Exempt agencies are the only exception to collecting the $5 fee. The only vehicles that do not require issuance of an e-tag would maybe be an ATV, off-road motorcycle, or salvage vehicles. And these are the type of vehicles that are not allowed to be driven on any roadway. As a quick reminder, you can always watch all these videos, including the video you're watching right now, along with all the other content in your dealer training course after you finish the course and you are operating your dealership or you are renewing your dealership and have operated for several years, uh, you know, we try to keep all these videos posted on the texasdealers.com and we'll always be posting new content uh, as soon as it does become available. So definitely stay on the website, whether you're getting your license for the first time or you are renewing your license. I think you will always find information that is very advantageous to you uh, before and during and after your dealer training course. Internet down temporary tags. If the web dealer system, that's web dealer e-tag system is unavailable at the time of the retail sale, you must use an internet down tag and provide a buyer's receipt. You are allowed to enter sales information into the database once the web dealer system is available again. So every once in a while, web dealer could be down due to system maintenance and things like that. So there could be a scenario where you sell the vehicle on the lot, but web dealer could possibly be unavailable. And so you can issue an internet down temporary tag. But afterwards, you'll definitely need to enter the sales information into web dealer once web dealer is back online. And this must be no later than the close of the next business day that you have access to the internet and web dealer. So here you see that temporary, I'm sorry, that internet down temporary tag. As you can see, it is just a little bit different from other temporary tags as you're gonna be required to hand write the expiration date, the year, the make, and the VIN of the vehicle manually. So you will do this manually. Uh, if you already have your dealership name and the barcode on the bottom right, but the majority of the information on the internet down temporary tag will be entered by you right then at the time of the sale. A dealer is responsible for the safekeeping of pre-printed internet down temporary tags, and you must store these in a very secure place. You will need to report any loss, theft, or destruction of any of these pre-printed internet down temporary tags to the Department of Motor Vehicles within 24 hours of discovering their loss, their theft, or their destruction. You may use a pre-printed internet down temporary tag for up to 12 months after the date that the pre-printed internet down temporary tag was created. Remember, you can only use them for 12 months. If you've got one that's over 12 months, you want to definitely never place those on a vehicle. The maximum number of internet down tags a newly licensed dealer may possess is 30. And I want to repeat that maximum number of internet downs tags for a newly licensed dealer is 30. However, dealers, such if you're in business for several years and you're renewing your course, then you obviously can request a higher allotment based on sales history. And the formula is based on one week of sales. Dealers must adhere to the following guidelines regarding internet down temporary tags. They're used when the internet down is down as an alternative to a buyer's guide, or maybe if web dealer's not functioning, tags and receipts are pre-printed by the dealer with the assigned number. Buyer and vehicle information, remember, is hand printed by the dealer at the time of the sale. The dealer is required to enter all information into the web dealer eTag database within 24 hours of resuming internet service. All other guidelines when using buyer temporary tags do apply to an internet down temporary tag. A dealer may obtain an advanced supply of specific numbers in order to issue those internet down tags just in case you are unable to uh, access that internet. So just keep that in mind. You definitely need to log back on here and uh, then reprint the, excuse me, get the back onto web dealer uh, after you have internet access. And I also want you to be aware, this here that you see on the screen is a great, great overview of legal dealer plate and temporary tag usage. And this form was created by the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles. So as you can see, it shows how a metal dealer plate can be legally used then explains the different types of temporary tags and what scenarios they may be used and what vehicles they may be placed upon. And you know, you can stop this video and review this great information, or you can definitely see this on texasdealers.com after the course. Uh, this 
plate usage and tag usage guide is also printed in that manual that you downloaded at the beginning of the course.